Picture this, it's 2026, you're shopping for a mid-size electric SUV, and the two cars in front of you could not be more different in philosophy. One is a brand new Mazda that tries to bottle driver and car as one into an EV. The other is BMW's first true Noe Classe production model, basically a rolling preview of BMW's next decade. Today on Autopedia, we're doing a deep, technical, no-fluff face-off. The 2026 Mazda CX-6e versus the 2026 BMW iX3 Noe Classe. And by the end, you'll know exactly which one fits your priorities. Range and charging dominance, software and cockpit tech, driving dynamics, packaging, or just pure value. Let's start with the big picture, because these two are born from two very different strategies. Mazda's CX-6e is Mazda expanding its battery electric lineup for Europe and other markets, leaning on a collaboration that lets them bring a competitive EV to market before their own dedicated EV platform matures. The promise is classic Mazda, design that feels crafted, and a driving character tuned for real roads, not just a spec sheet. BMW's new iX3, on the other hand, is not just the next iX3, it's the first series-produced Neue Klasse model. That matters because Neue Klasse is BMW's clean sheet foundation for design language, electronics, software architecture, and sixth-generation e-drive hardware. This iX3 isn't simply a new car, it's a technology launch vehicle. Now let's go hard into the numbers and hardware, starting with the Mazda CX-6e powertrain. Officially, the CX-6e uses a 78 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, LFP chemistry, feeding a rear axle electric motor. Output is 190 kilowatts, which Mazda also states as 258 PS, and torque is 290 Newton meters. It's rear wheel drive only in this configuration, and Mazda quotes zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.9 seconds, with an electronically limited top speed of 185 kilometers per hour. Range is quoted up to 484 kilometers on WLTP, depending on equipment and tires. Charging is where the CX-6e plants its flag, up to 195 kilowatts DC fast charging, and Mazda claims 10 to 80% in 24 minutes under specified conditions. For AC, Mazda lists an 11 kilowatt onboard charger for three-phase charging, and a heat pump is standard. That combination, LFP plus heat pump plus 11 kilowatt AC, screams daily usability and predictable ownership, because LFP is typically chosen for durability and thermal stability, and the heat pump helps keep winter efficiency from falling off a cliff. But the BMW iX3 Noe Classic comes in like it's playing a different sport. BMW's press materials position the iX3 with sixth-generation BMW eDrive technology, and they quote a range up to 805 kilometers WLTP, or up to 500 miles in markets that use miles. They also quote peak charging power up to 400 kilowatts. Let that land for a second. 400 kilowatt peak is ultra-rapid territory, and BMW's own consumer information states that, under optimal conditions, you can add roughly 309 to 372 miles of range in 10 minutes, and it can charge 10 to 80% in 21 minutes at up to 400 kilowatts. On the performance side, BMW states the first production variant rolling out is the BMW iX350X drive, with 345 kilowatts, or 469 horsepower, an electric all-wheel drive. And BMW even publishes provisional WLTP consumption for this variant in the press kit. 17.9 to 15.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, with a provisional WLTP range band of 679 to 805 kilometers. That is a serious efficiency target for an SUV, and it's paired with all-wheel drive and nearly 470 horsepower. So if you're keeping score purely on power and charging headline, Mazda gives you 190 kilowatts and 195 kilowatt DC charging. BMW answers with 345 kilowatts and up to 400 kilowatt DC charging. That's not a small gap, that's two different design centers. Mazda aims for a balanced midsize EV that fits the mainstream fast charging world. BMW aims to be ready for the next wave of ultra high power charging infrastructure. But specs are only half the story, because what really changes the ownership experience is how these vehicles manage energy, braking, and software. Mazda says the CX-6 he is tuned for a Mazda-typical Jinba Tai feel, that human-machine unity, and they explicitly talk about European tuning work on suspension, steering, brakes, and the overall driving behavior, done with major input from Mazda's European R&D center in Oberursel. They also publish three driving modes, normal, sport, and individual, 
and they say you can adjust acceleration, character, recuperation, and steering assistance. That's important because individual mode is where enthusiasts live. It's the difference between this EV is fine and this EV feels like mine. BMW goes deeper and more radical because Neue Klasse is built around a new electronics and software architecture with four high-performance computers that BMW calls superbrains. In driving dynamics, BMW names a centerpiece, the heart of joy, described as drivetrain and driving dynamics management technology. And BMW's own material emphasizes integrated management of drivetrain, braking system, and recuperation with a claim that in everyday driving, 98% of braking maneuvers are carried out using recuperation only. That's a very specific statement, and it tells you what BMW is optimizing. Seamless one-pedal style control without constantly blending friction brakes, plus maximum energy recovery. BMW also highlights a soft stop function for smoother stopping. If you've ever driven an EV that feels slightly grabby at the last two meters of a stoplight, you know why BMW is bragging about stop smoothness. They're telling you they've tuned the entire deceleration experience to feel premium and natural. Now let's talk packaging, because these are both mid-size SUVs, but they use their space differently. Mazda publishes the CX-6E dimensions, 4,850 millimeters long, 1,935 millimeters wide, and 1,620 millimeters tall, with a long wheelbase of 2,902 millimeters and short overhangs for balanced proportions. Cargo is 468 liters in the boot, expanding to 1,434 liters with the second row folded, and there's an 83 liter storage compartment under the front hood, a frunk, sized to fit things like a charging cable. BMW publishes the iX3's dimensions too, 4,782 millimeters long, 1,895 millimeters wide, and 1,635 millimeters tall. Cargo, 520 liters expanding to 1,750 liters with the rear seat folded, plus a 58 liter underhood storage compartment. On towing, BMW states the maximum trailer load for the iX350 iDrive is 2,000 kilograms, and it offers an optional trailer tow hitch. Mazda's official releases we're using here focus more on the vehicle modes and daily usability, towing figures are not emphasized in the same way in those particular official materials. If you're a practical buyer, those packaging numbers speak loudest in two places. First, BMW offers more boot volume, both in base and max configuration. Second, Mazda offers the larger frunk at 83 liters versus BMW's 58 liters, which is actually meaningful if you like keeping cables, adapters, and a tire kit out of your main cargo area. And third, towing. If towing matters, BMW is coming in with a clearly stated two-ton capability, which is serious for an EV SUV. Now, cockpit and human-machine interface. This is where these cars get really interesting because both brands are trying to define what modern feels like, but they do it in opposite ways. Mazda describes the CX-6E cabin using the Japanese concept of ma, the beauty of empty space and they go for a clean atmosphere with a big tech centerpiece, an ultra-wide 26.45-inch touchscreen in a 32.9 format. They pair it with a large head-up display projecting navigation and key driving information into your line of sight. And Mazda adds multiple interaction layers, advanced voice recognition in nine languages activated with Hey Mazda, plus gesture control, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and 256 color ambient lighting. Then they sprinkle in an actually clever audio feature, Bluetooth speakers integrated into the front headrests, letting driver and front passenger hear media or navigation without bothering everyone else. That's a very Mazda thinks about humans touch. Mazda also adds something I love from an engineering perspective, situational vehicle modes that automate multiple functions together. They list four intelligent modes, pet comfort, rest, relax, and car wash, that adjust vehicle functions to match the moment. It's easy to laugh at pet mode, but it's actually the kind of software feature that makes EV ownership smoother because EVs are computers on wheels and the best ones simplify the weird edge cases, keeping climate stable for a short stop, preventing accidental wiper and sensor chaos in a car wash, or managing cabin behavior when you're waiting. Those aren't gimmicks. Those are quality of life engineering choices. BMW's cabin story is more next-gen platform. BMW Panoramic iDrive is the headline. BMW's guiding principle is hands on the wheel, 
eyes on the road, and they frame the interface as a balanced mix of digital functions and physical elements. BMW also introduces BMW Operating System X and the panoramic vision concept that projects key content across the lower section of the windshield in the driver's field of view, plus an optional 3D head-up display, according to BMW's consumer-facing information. On top of that, BMW CES 2026 messaging leans hard into AI and voice. BMW's intelligent personal assistant gets expanded, and BMW presents an AI-powered version integrated with Amazon Alexa Plus capability in natural dialogue. In other words, Mazda gives you a huge screen plus strong basics and clever daily modes. BMW gives you a brand new operating concept and a voice assistant strategy designed to keep evolving. Let's shift to safety and driver assistance, because here Mazda gets surprisingly specific. Mazda states the CX-6E comes standard with a broad set of advanced driver assistance systems, including nine airbags and a sensor suite combining high-resolution cameras, millimeter-wave radar, and ultrasonic sensors to improve detection and visibility. They mention systems like smart brake support, lane keep assist, and blind spot monitoring. And then they add an occupancy monitoring system that warns if children or pets are left inside. That's not just a checklist feature. That's a response to a real safety problem, and it pairs naturally with the pet comfort mode. BMW's press materials emphasize the latest systems for automated driving, optimized for human vehicle interaction, and the consumer information highlights optimized driver assistance systems, but BMW's official messaging in the materials we're using is more about the overall architecture and experience rather than listing every individual ADAS function line by line. Now, let's do the driving dynamics discussion like engineers, not marketers. Mazda says the CX-6E is tuned for European roads, suspension, steering, brakes, and overall behavior, and gives you control over acceleration response, recuperation strength, and steering assist. That signals a focus on linearity and driver confidence rather than brute force. The CX-6E is rear drive with 290 new meters, and Mazda quotes a 7.9 second 0100 km per hour run. That's not a drag strip number. It's a real-world daily EV number, and there's nothing wrong with that. If Mazda nails steering feel, body control, and predictability, it can be satisfying without being silly fast. BMW is taking a different route. The iX350 xDrive is all-wheel drive, 345 kilowatts, and the chassis and software stack are built around Heart of Joy integration. The idea that the car's brain is orchestrating torque delivery, brake blending, and energy recuperation as one system. BMW explicitly claims that accelerator, brake, and steering inputs are executed with directness and precision, and they highlight traction and soft stop. That suggests BMW is chasing not only speed but polish, how the car transitions between power and regen, how it settles at a stop, how it responds instantly without feeling nervous. It's the difference between fast and well-resolved. Aerodynamics also matter more than most people think, because at highway speeds, aero is range. BMW publishes a drag coefficient of 0.24 for the iX3, credited to detail optimization. Mazda's official CX-6E materials emphasize design language, proportions, and features. The aerodynamic coefficient isn't highlighted in the same way in these specific official releases. If you do a lot of Autobahn or motorway driving, the BMW's stated aero target is a big part of why it can claim such high WLTP range in the first place. Okay, so how do you actually choose between these two without getting hypnotized by the biggest number? Here's how I'd frame it. If you want a technology flagship for the next era, the BMW iX3 Neue Klasse reads like the obvious pick. It brings the massive WLTP range ceiling up to 805 kilometers depending on configuration, ultra-rapid charging up to 400 kilowatts, and a new software and electronics architecture with four super brains designed for a software-defined future. It's also the performance hammer, 345 kilowatts and X-Drive all-wheel drive in the iX350 X-Drive, plus strong towing capability at up to 2,000 kilograms. And the interface is BMW's new bet, panoramic iDrive, operating system X, panoramic vision, and an AI voice assistant strategy that BMW is publicly showcasing as part of the car's identity. But if you're looking for a more human-centered EV that still hits the key modern requirements, good WLTP range, real fast charging, standard heat pump, and a cabin that feels clean but not clinical, 
The Mazda CX-6e is a compelling alternative. You get an LFP pack at 78 kilowatt hours, rear wheel drive, 190 kilowatts and 290 Nm, and a DC charging peak of 195 kilowatts with a stated 1080 time of 24 minutes under the right conditions. You also get a very Mazda approach to daily life, the MA interior philosophy, the ultra-wide 26.45-inch display, the big head-up display, voice in nine languages with Hey Mazda, gesture control, and those practical intelligent modes like pet comfort and car wash that smooth out real ownership moments. And Mazda is openly telling you the vehicle dynamics were tuned specifically for European roads, which usually means they've put time into ride compliance, steering calibration, and braking feel. The things you notice every single day, not only at full throttle. And here's the wild part. In 2026, these two might serve different kinds of enthusiast. The BMW is the enthusiast's choice if your enthusiasm is for systems engineering, architecture, integration, future-proof computing, ultra-high power charging, and effortless long-distance EV travel. The Mazda is the enthusiast's choice if your enthusiasm is for how a car feels in normal driving, the way it turns in, how predictable it is mid-corner, how smoothly it responds to your right foot, and how thoughtfully it supports daily life. So let me give you two buyer profiles, Autopedia style. Profile 1. You road trip a lot, you want minimal charging stops, you want the highest ceiling for future charging infrastructure, you may tow, and you want the most advanced platform BMW makes in this era. That's iX3 Neue Klasse territory, especially the iX350 xDrive with its published performance output, big cargo flexibility, and the charging range claims BMW is confident enough to publish. Profile 2. You want a premium-feeling EV SUV that's still approachable, you appreciate Japanese design restraint, you care about a well-tuned driving experience on real roads, and you want fast charging that's already highly competitive without needing perfect 400 kilowatt stations. You also like clever comfort and lifestyle software features that solve daily problems. That's CX-6e territory. Now I want to throw one more technical thought at you, because it matters battery chemistry, and charging behavior over time. Mazda's choice of LFP is typically associated with strong cycle durability and thermal robustness, which can be attractive if you plan to keep the car for a long time or do lots of charging. BMW's official materials here focus on sixth generation E-Drive and the car's charging performance rather than spelling out chemistry in the same way on the pages we're using. And BMW's strategy is clearly about maximizing both efficiency and charging speed with the new platform. In the real world, your best experience will come from matching the car to your infrastructure. If your local and travel routes actually have ultra-high power chargers and you'll use them often, BMW's peak capability could be a game changer. If your life is mostly 11 kilowatt AC at home plus occasional DC sessions, Mazda's set of choices can be a sweet spot of simplicity and usability. All right, let's land this comparison with a simple verdict question. Do you want the EV that feels like the next chapter of BMW as a technology company, or do you want the EV that feels like Mazda translating its driver-centric DNA into electricity? Because that's what this really is. The 2026 Mazda CX-6e is Mazda saying, we can do EVs our way, design-led, human-first, tuned for the road you actually drive. The 2026 BMW iX3 Noe Classe is BMW saying, this is our new foundation, bigger range, faster charging, deeper integration, and a cockpit that feels like a new operating system for mobility. Now you tell me in the comments, if you had to pick one for the next three years, are you choosing Mazda's crafted simplicity and European tuning, or BMW's Noe Classe tech leap and long distance dominance? And if you want, I can also do a follow-up episode where we break down cost per kilometer charging scenarios and how these specs translate into real trip times on typical European routes. Before you go, hit like if this deep technical comparison helped you. Subscribe to Autopedia for more real-world EV breakdowns and drop a comment telling me which one you'd pick, the Mazda CX-6e or the BMW iX3 Noe Classe. Your choice might decide the next episode.